happy to be here with you and I want to congratulate you first of all by catching this vision young. You know, I got into this when I started my PhD and because of that I said no, I have to work more on this and that's why you had me having another master's in machine intelligence which has to do with AI. So when I came in here and I saw a young guy, I said, wow, that's good. It's an opportunity for you, and I want you to maximize it. The world is there. Africans are being requested in the AI world, and the AI world is waiting for you. Tell your neighbor, the AI world is waiting for me. Exactly. Thank you. Please take it back to the first slide. Okay? Yeah. First slide. Building a data-driven community, a fulcrum for AI innovation. What is a fulcrum? You can remember your days of physics. When you talk about a fulcrum, you're talking about something that, like, uh, all of this, that creates an effort that helps in AI innovation. Gone are those days. Whereby, before you can build a house, you have to know how you have to load your block, get your bricks, get your cement, your sand, and the rest of it. Those days are gone. That's our own early days. But in your days, you can build a house without having a bag of cement. What have you used to build the house? Your data. Because already you know the quantity of every component that is required to build that house. And that is why in the field of AI, you can see, uh, as we go on, you will see more of what you can actually do. And how you can actually build a data-driven community. Just as the first speaker spoke, that community is very, very important. And that is the vision I have, and that's what I'm doing. We need a community that provides data sets that are required for solving problems. The technology is there, the, the models are there, but the problem is, do we have African data set? Remember, a model that is trained to work in the Western world may not be able to work in my own village and your village in Africa. And that is why we have to build data sets that are able to solve African problems in African way. Please move to the next slide. Now we'll be looking at three tips on how we can build a data-driven community and how can those data serve as full group for technological innovation and also we we'll look at specific examples. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah. Data driven community. It, it, it's made up of a group of people, you and I, coming together to look at what is the problem at hand and how can we help in getting data to solve this problem. For example, the business world is changing, the economy is changing, a product that is being produced. How, what is the customer satisfaction about this product? What do we need? What do we need to do? We need to form a community, get data from customers, get data from the cloud, get data from online, and the funny thing is that most of us will deal with data every day. But this data, we don't keep them for better usage. And that's how we say a community of people that comes together to put data. And what are the data used to use for? To identify problems, to develop solutions, and to track progress and they can be found in all sectors, in government, in academics, in our social life, in industries and organizations. Next slide, please. How can I build a data driven community? The first thing you have to know is that you have to identify your audience. Who are the end users of these products? of the data you are trying to build. Are you building data for the government to use in making decisions? Are you building data for the industry to use in improving their products? Are you building data for 
yeah, yeah, in innovative new AI application, you should be able to identify your audience. And then find your audience, we help you to know the structure of the data you need. We help you to know the type of technique that you need to use. We help you to know the type of model that you need to use in training. And this goes a long way. The second thing is that you have to set your clear goals. You cannot be doing, uh, we cannot be building data for this and this and that and that and that. It has to be dependent on the project that you want to do. A few days ago, I had a meeting with some group of people in my own research, whatever, and I know not the outside there, and we're like, ah, when we know that you're into data creation, data community building, I said yes. Okay, can you help us while to a project, want to do this, want to do that? I said, good. Now, I said, okay, first thing is, let me know your goal. What do you want to achieve with your data set? Once you let me know, then that's, that's what I do in my community. The roots will come together and get to the data set. I have to tell you that when I went for deep learning in Daba in Ghana, and the one in, the, the one in Tunisia, I came across this white people, they are looking for African data sets. Because this data set are scarce. What do you need to do? Get a clear goal. What problem do you want to solve with the data you are trying to gather? Then you have to choose the right what platform. What platform do I need for me to be able to get this data? Do I want to get a cloud-based data, data set? Do I want to use geospatial data like DSM is doing presently? Do I want to use other media of getting the data set? You have to get a clear platform of what you want to use. You want to create, have to create a high quality content. You have to ensure that the data you are creating is a form of data that is usable. Now, some of us, when you are doing your project, after write some of them. Okay, you bring your data, so you see them with Google Form. By the time you begin to read, what is there? What sex are you? What are you, are you living? What is your name? No. You need to look at the problem at hand to actually define the type of question and data you are gathering. Because if you don't get your data set right, there's no training or model you are doing that will give you the right word, result. We all know in computer science, we say that garbage in what? Garbage out. So data set is very key. You have to promote your community. How do you promote your community? You promote your community by ensuring that the data set you are providing is somewhere in GitHub, is somewhere in the cloud that can be usable. By making sure that your data set grows, from the level of just collection to analysis, publishing it. By the time you publish your data set, I'm telling you, I've received mails and calls on my on my on my uh, social media, whatever, telling that with some publication that you did, and we need that data set, please, how can we get it? By so doing what are you doing? You are contributing to the society and you are solving what? You are solving problems. Promote your community. And also, be responsive and engaged. Ensure that we are also responding to this cause. Ensure that people that come to you that, oh, we need data set on this, you are able to do what? I want to give them exactly what they are requesting for. Just yesterday, I was trying to put, the, put together some data set that I was working on for someone in South Africa. You can do better than that. When I see young generation doing something, if I don't know the wife, I was like, I tell my children, I wish I had been in this when I was younger. So you are at a younger age and it is better for you. You can do something good with that data bundle that mommy and daddy is buying for you. You can do something better with it. You can create data set, you can have your own kitchen account. You can, in fact, by the time you begin to make your data up, you don't need to bring insight out of your data set that you are creating. You won't ask that they are money for money again. That's what I'm telling you. The next slide, please. Oh, sorry, go back to that slide. I want to pick out something from there. If you look at the goal setting, in setting your goal, you have to be what? Specific. You have to be what? Specific. You must know exactly what you want to do. You have to, your goal has to be measurable, not something that cannot be achieved. 
It must be a data set that can actually lead to a problem, to a solution. Today we are all using chatbots, we are using different media and the rest of them. Why? Because those people collect their data and use it wisely. That is why a, a robot can galvanize. That is why a chatbot can say, bring this, it will bring that. I didn't know this place today, I came to the Google map and I was able to get the right location. Are you getting it now? Because the right data set was used. That doesn't have to be measurable. It has to be relevant. It must be attainable and what? Time bound. Next slide, please. My time is running out. I have something to say. Now you have the fruit. What do you have to do? The first thing, that the, that's you standing there with your laptop. And what are you doing? You are identifying problem. Start from your neighborhood. What problem exists within my community? Look at the campus and the place of work where you are. What problem exists there? And try to identify the problem. When you identify the problem, generate what? New idea. What idea, what, can, what method can I use to solve this problem that is intense? Then verify and check if that solution you are trying to provide is what is, is okay. Then the feedback is what? The result that you get after you have analyzed your data. And that looks about what? Innovation. Next slide, I'm going to rush. Now, if you look at it, a data-driven community will always give birth to what? An open source initiative. You see many people today having scholarship here and there. When your work is a novel, when it has novelty, when it's original, people will come for it. People are tired of using secondary data sets. They want to see the data sets that are novel, that are, that are really talking about the problem of the people. And that is why data collection, data driven community is a very key one. You can see, look at the Mayfair, the Nigerian robot girl. You can see it's being used in most of the places that you can do one. Tell your neighbor you can develop one. The next one, the next slide, please. I'm rounding off quickly. You can see that woman there is a white woman. I want to see black Nigerian. We want to see Nigerian on bed. I want to see a Nigerian robot developed by Nigeria that will like see a patient on the bed. You can always do this when you have the data. You go to our clinics today. Every time they will always check our vital. They will always take blood pressure, take this, take that. What are they doing with those data sets? And that is what the white people are exploring. They are making good use of it. And because of that, the robot there is not a magician. It's just having some code. The report you was used to run and it's working. And what is it doing? It's then carrying out health care, providing health care service to the community. I'm rounding up. Yeah, please go to the next slide. I'm rushing. Conclusion What am I saying is that data scientists are responsible for collecting, cleaning, preparing data for use in AI models. The quality of the data directly impacts the what? the performance of the model. They use data to develop new AI algorithms that are more efficient and accurate to improve performance of existing AI model and to, and to create new AI applications that solve real world problems. Thank you. Please, next slide, I'm finishing. Those are my co-authors. That's Joshua Adeko Kifortunatos and Rashid Ramon and the sponsor. I want to encourage you and I want to charge you again. Go out there, create data, analyze, and solve AI problems. Thank you for listening.